Lucy here at Just Chill When You Sleep. Um, today I'm talking about twins, so I've got my little dollies here to help me. Um, number one thing I'm asked about twins is should my twins sleep in the same bed? Well, the answer is yes or no. Don't sleep two newborns in a Moses basket, there simply isn't enough space and there's a risk of them overheating which we want to avoid. So with twins they're often um, born premature or a low birth weight, not always but often, so we need to bear that in mind. Now with safe sleeping guidelines it's even more important to really be responsible when your baby's a lower birth weight because statistically they are more at risk. But don't spend your time worrying about it because it is very rare. So when you're placing your baby to sleep in a cot or a crib, there's a few different ways you can do it. So if we had them in a crib, we want their feet we can put them side by side, number one. We want their feet at the end of the cot, so there's no chance of them going under the blankets, and we tuck the blankets in um, separately. The other option is you can have them at either end of the cot, with their feet at the end of the cot, with separate blankets. So kind of like that, if you imagine it's in a cot. If you're gonna place them like this, with either side of the cot. You can only have them in grow bags or sleeping bags because of the danger of loose bedding and blankets. That's what's dangerous when it comes to baby sleep. We don't want loose bedding. Um, that's really the best way to set them up in the cot. Now, as they get bigger, I do think it can be beneficial for them to be separate in separate cots. So I would be looking around the four to six month mark to be moving them into separate cots. You can do this earlier if you want to, if you have the space. So obviously, with SIDS guidelines, we really want to keep them in the same room up until around six months. Um, depending on you, it is a personal decision. If you have space, two cots in your room as well. Um, so have a think about that. But generally, around the four to six month mark, I'd be hoping to separate them into separate cots. You could have the cots close to one another, or you could have them a bit further apart. And sometimes when they get to toddler age or a bit bigger babies, some parents do put them in separate bedrooms if they have the space, but I don't think that's necessary for their sleep. So don't worry if you don't have the space or if you want to keep them together. Some twins have that really strong bond where they want to talk to each other, they want to chat when they first wake up in the morning. Similarly to siblings, it is okay to share a room. It doesn't mean that you can't reach your sleep goals with them in the same room. So, that covers off the room. Obviously, we want to have a good sleep environment for all babies, whether they're twins or singles. So, we would be looking at a nice dark space for melatonin production. You can use white noise. It's very helpful for newborns. If you do use it, a nice, consistent, continuous, boring noise that goes on all night. Um, we also want to think about safe sleeping as I've discussed, no loose bedding, no toys when they're little. As they get a bit bigger, um, you can introduce an appropriate comforter. That would be a very small teddy or a piece of material that they can become attached to and literally comfort themselves. Now, when it comes to feeding, this can be a challenge. So I've been asked a lot about tandem feeding, which means when you're breastfeeding both babies, it is possible, it can be quite daunting, and initially, baby's going to need to feed a lot and on demand to get your supply up. But also, premature babies, if they are premature, need feeding even more often because their tiny little tummies can only hold so much. And also, they're learning to suck, so it can be challenging. I'd recommend getting support wherever you can. But I wanted to show you a couple of different feeding um, positions if you're struggling with breastfeeding. So you can do the cradle hold where you have both of them. Um, one of them would be held closer to your body and the other one is still close but the, their body kind of overlaps the other body. Um, I would suggest getting your latch right before you attempt the tandem feeding. So it might be worth getting your latch tested or looked at by a breastfeeding support worker if you have a local group or perhaps a lactation consultant if you're struggling. But some people don't, so see how you get on. So that's one hold. You can also turn one of the babies around and have them in what's called a football hold. Be careful when you are holding the head, you should only support um, the back so they can still move it back and forth. So you can hold like this. You can also turn this baby round 
and do a double football hold like this. You can have both the babies vertically and hold them like this. You probably have the legs kind of, it's difficult to show it with these dollies, but you'd have the legs around like that. Um, there are a few other ways, whatever works for you really, um, and whatever your baby's happy with. If you're feeding separately, obviously that's fine. When it comes to feeding schedules and routine, I say it's quite good to introduce one by about four months, um, if it suits you, obviously. If you're managing perfectly fine, no problem. Twin mums, I find, need some organisation in their lives because otherwise it's really, really hard with two babies to plan your day. It can be overwhelming if they're feeding all day long, you feel like you never get out, but by the time you fed one and changed the other one, and then it's like three hours before you get out of the house. So a schedule can work really well. There's two ways of doing it. Either they are feeding on the same schedule, which means either tandem feeding or bottle feeding and someone else is helping you, um, or you can put them on a schedule that's 15 minutes or so apart. So if you did that, you might start in the morning, wake them up if they weren't awake at seven o'clock, you feed one twin, then you wake the next twin. Then with the naps, you'd put them down 15 minutes apart and the whole day they'd be on 15 minutes separate schedule. Can be useful at the beginning if you are trying to teach them to self-settle and sleep, sleep independently from you, it can be helpful to do that initially. But some don't, some go straight into it and get them on the same schedule. So when it comes to napping, I ideally, if they're older especially, try and get them doing the same nap because it's gonna help you. You need that time to rest and recuperate. Looking after two babies, potentially other children, is exhausting. So if you can get them doing, especially that long lunchtime nap, together at the same time can be really, really helpful. One of the things I'm asked a lot is, what do I do if they're waking one another up during nap time or the night time? So if you're starting kind of a new routine and working towards independent sleep, the best time to start implementing anything is bedtime. Bedtime around seven o'clock is a good time for babies to go to bed and melatonin or sleepy hormones really high so you've got a good chance of these babies going down at the same time. Pop them in their crib, um, have, have, having done a lovely, relaxing bedtime routine, the same thing, the same time every night, so their little bodies can relax and know what's coming next. If you have help at bedtime, that's fantastic. You can take one baby each, especially if you're bottle feeding. Otherwise, tandem feed, and then if, if you have support, get someone else to help you put the other baby into bed. So you put them both down, give them a big kiss and cuddle, and it's up to you how much support you give to get them to go to sleep. It might be a hand on the chest. Um, if they're an older baby and they can roll and they're bigger, it might be that they sleep on their front. It's okay for them to sleep on their front when they're able to roll. Um, once they're bigger, we can't control their sleeping position, so should, we should let them get on with sleeping in the way that they want to sleep. But in terms of support, you might be supporting them that way. Um, you might leave them for a few minutes and see what they do. Not all babies will cry if you have a nice, good, relaxing bedtime routine and have your naps balanced during the day. If they wake in the night, I think there's a real worry that they're going to wake one another up. Now you'll find if the other twin is in a deep sleep cycle, the crying of their sibling won't wake them up. If they are both in a light sleep and one of them starts crying, then yes, that may wake them up. But I promise you, they won't stay awake the entire night. They do need to sleep. So the answer is, I would either, if it's sleep time, so night time or nap time, be supporting them back to sleep. So whether that's with touch, whether that's with a cuddle, whether it's a verbal support, um, or you're gonna be giving them a bit of space to settle themselves, depending on how they react how you feel about it and what they are doing, if they are really asking for your support. I don't think you should stop and worry and think, if I don't go in there right this second, they're going to wake the sibling up. I think sometimes babies can be stirring and they're not actually asking for us. It's normal to stir and make noise in our sleep. And sometimes we can rush in far too quickly, worrying they're going to wake their twin up. So see how you go with it. 
implement a good routine, get them on that, and that is the foundation for a good night's sleep. So all of the same rules apply to ordinary baby sleep, it's just there's two people, so it can get a bit more complicated with physically seeing to two babies. But sometimes that can actually help because that baby can't always have your immediate response because there's another person in the room. So you will need to choose which twin you go to first. Funnily enough, I often go to the twin who's almost settling first, um, and the one that's making a bit more fuss, I go to them second, because you've got more chance of the first twin settling quickly. Um, if you are swaddling, you should be stopping swaddling by about four months. Um, bear in mind, if one of your twins is much bigger than the other one, you might not want to co-bed them, which is putting them in the same bed, because if they were to get into some position and they were not big enough to roll away from their twin or move away from their twin, it can be a bit dangerous. I hope that's been helpful and that covers lots of twin info. If you are interested in more advice on twins and multiples, there's an excellent organisation called TAMBA, which stands for Twins and Multiple Births Association. Um, the website is tamba.org.uk, so do have a look at it. Um, do please comment on the video down below and let me know if you have any questions. Um, also, please subscribe to my channel for more exciting sleep updates. Thanks for watching. Bye.